Hey friends, how's it going? This is David Potts with Song Notes, and a quick lesson today where I want to talk about some fun sliding chord shapes you can use. I'm going to be looking at the key of D and the key of A, and this is a really cool technique which introduces you to the idea that there is more than one place on this whole fretboard you have to play very common chords you're used to, right? We take a D, we take an A. Very common chords, they always sound good together, but the thing is, with your D, you can actually slide this D up here, and even if you don't slide it, you can play this D here, you can play it here, you can play it here. I'm only playing three strings for each of these voicings, but these are all voicings that are pretty learnable, right? Two fingers is all you need to play these, but the cool part is, is you can slide between them. So I'm talking about... Right? You're sort of playing the chord, and then as I transition up here to the second chord, I'm sort of strumming it before my hand's in position, and I slide into position. And you can also do it when you're going... It just sounds nice and good. And same thing with the A. Right here on the 2nd fret, we can slide it up to the 5th, 6th, 7th fret, and we can slide that up to the 9th, 10th, 11th fret. Okay, some of these are harder than others, obviously, but check out this PDF I made you and this video lesson I'm about to show you. It talks about how to learn these chord shapes and then explains the approach of sliding in a very step-by-step -step basic way. It's just a fun thing to noodle on when you're hanging around with the guitar and you can just sort of improvise and just have some good fun. You don't need to get into a whole song or progression or any strumming pattern for that matter. You can just kind of have fun going between basic chord shapes, right? And this works on bar strength a little bit with your index finger. It works on just learning universal patterns for these chords. So lots of good stuff to follow. Stay tuned. Um, thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. Uh, Tim, thanks for your support and your question specifically. So you requested the Tom Petty song girl on LSD. I haven't learned that song yet, but you mentioned in your message to me that he's doing some slide on the D that you can't work out. And I read that and I'm like, well, I got to hear what he's talking about. And basically this is exactly what Tom Petty's doing. It sounds like is he's going between this D and this D, right? And if you wanted, you could combine that with a G and A, for example. Lots of fun you can have. So let's get into this lesson. I'll show you some good stuff here. Get the PDF at my website. And thanks to all of you who are supporting me. I've said it all twice, so let's not say it anymore and get into that lesson. And uh, I'll see you all on the other side. Let's go. All right, y'all, so let's start with the key of D and look at these three different chord positions. What I'm gonna do first is teach you these positions and then I'm gonna talk about the sliding because the sliding really requires you to have the chord positions worked out. Okay, so for starters, these are three different ways to effectively play a D major chord. Now, typically we'll play a D major like this, right? Um, open, second, third, open on the thinnest four strings. The important part about this is the fourth string is a D note, right? The fourth string is a D. We're gonna leave that open for all for that chord as well as all the chords I'm about to show you. That's a really important thing. That's gonna give it the D tonality. It's gonna to kind of underlie everything in, in a very effective way. Now, as far as these, um, these three chord positions, the first one is effectively this D major shape, but we're not, what we're gonna do is not play the thinnest string. We're not gonna play it. We're actually gonna change these fingers. And the reason why is we want to have our index finger, um, well, I, I recommend doing it like this, having your index finger here on the, the third fret, second string, and then put your middle finger down on the second string, third fret. So just first get good at just doing these three notes by themselves, okay? Now, typically when I'm playing this, I will sort of lightly touch this finger into the first string so that the first string won't even make a noise for me, even if I do pluck it, because I'm kind of muting it. If you're doing it like this, the first string is open, it's gonna make a sound. The reason why you wanna mute it is it gives you some sort of room for error. You don't need to worry about not strumming that first string, right? So that's just a general little tip. You also can wrap your thumb around the, 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 the back if you wanna mute that thickest string also. Basically the idea here is you don't want the strings you're not playing to make any noises. So this whole little exercise with the D, we're only gonna be on these, um, the second, third, and fourth string. So first get used to this shape, okay? Be able to play it. I like to silence the strings, play it again, right? You really wanna target that fourth string as your bass note and only strum, fourth, third, second string, fourth, third, second string, okay? 
now. That's like a very controlled strum, right? If you accidentally strum another string, if you're muting it, it's no big deal. Now the next chord is going to be seventh fret, right? So go by the dots on your guitar. I have a dot right here that I can see. Um, you see these dots, you know, um, my third fret has one, my fifth fret has one, my seventh fret has one, ninth fret, and then twelfth has two dots. So your guitar might be different, but you want to sort of use the, the dots as wayfinding or whatever your guitar's markings are. Now the second little chord is like this. This is open seventh seventh. And the idea here is we're going to use our index finger just barred on the second, uh, the, sorry, the second and third string on the seventh fret. And by barred, we just means we're pushing it down so you get a clean sound. So this one, this one finger is pushing down those two notes. Okay. Now, if you were to slide, don't worry about the slide yet, like as far as that. But basically, if you were to go between this chord and this chord, notice how the second finger, the or this, the index finger here, it's kind of not having to, I mean, you're changing frets, but it's kind of like maintaining its same relative angle based on your body, right? You're not having to like do some something totally different and crazy. That's a really helpful thing to keep in mind. Um, that makes the transition easier, right? So you basically go in from this chord, lifting up your middle finger, sliding it up to the seventh fret, and then playing the same fourth, third, second string. Okay, so that's the second chord. Again, I'm sort of muting this first string if I can with this finger. It's just lightly touching it, but it's not pushing it down. That way, if I accidentally play it, play the thinnest string, it won't make a noise, okay? But try to just play the fourth, third, second string. Now let's go to this third chord, which is gonna be uh, up here. This is gonna be open, 11th fret, 10th fret. Okay, so you look at my sort of my tabs or my, um, my picture here, basically the middle finger is on the 11th fret, third string. My index finger is on the second string, 10th fret. And again, practice going from this seventh one up here. A little bit of finger movements required for the index finger, okay? But this is the next sort of transition you want to get good at. So then now, we, now what you can do is, you can memorize these or use my PDFs and just sort of get good at going between these three. Go as slow as you need to. This is a nice little exercise just on sort of jumping around the fretboard, silence the strings after every play. That's what I like to do, you know? Nice little thing you can work out here. Now, um, I have a tab at the bottom of my PDF, and what it's gonna basically do is do two strums for each chord and then three strums for the last one. So if you don't do the slide, it's gonna be this. And ideally, what you wanna do is play these at a steady tempo, right? So if you're tapping your foot, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. This is a nice little exercise you can work on if you wanna get used to changing and staying steady in time. Now, here's the deal, um, you, the next part is going to be bringing in this slide. So the idea is if we're going from this string, this chord, to this one, what we can do is basically Now the trick to a slide like this is basically you want to kind of work backwards. You know where you want to end up, which is right here. Okay, so let's assume you know that chord. You know you want to get here. But the idea is you want to strum somewhere where your fingers are on root, in root, whatever, on the way up there, but they're not there yet, but they are pushing down. Okay? Now, it, this can be tricky. You can kind of get muddled up here and lose your momentum. And that's a whole tricky part about sliding. I will say this, keep the end in mind. The clean strum on this open 7-7 seven seventh is really what you want to have in mind. It's where you want to end up at. Now from there, you can kind of slide up from maybe one fret away. So strum it when you're on 6-6 six, six, and just slide up to 7-7. Seven, seven. That's a first good slide to start with. Once you get a hang of that, maybe do a two fret slide. And notice how I'm not doing like a, I'm not doing a super fast one. You don't have, you can, you don't have to. You can be, you can be slow. Then, as you get used to that, you can sort of extend the distance, really keep that end point in mind, 
You want to be just loose but firm and get that momentum and just land that rocket like you're a SpaceX rocket, right? You really, this is all about landing this chord. And once you get used to that, see what happened there is I muffled some strings. Whoops. What I'm doing here is I'm starting that, that slide strum down here. Okay, you can do that or you can do a closer slide, but that's the first thing you want to work out is going from this chord to that one. Now, from this one to this one, same principles. Get used to this final position and work backwards from there. If we know we're coming from here, what we can do is get our fingers in this shape ahead of time. And bring in that open fourth string. Okay. Okay, so we, now we can do the whole tab here with this slide. That's what we're gonna have for that D chord. And then what you really can do here is just do some quick improvisation if you want. Um, before we, I'm gonna to get to the A in a second, but before we get there, just play around with these three shapes. Just kind of literally try to think about something else, watch sports or something, watch TV. Now, um, let's move on to the A next, because this is gonna open things up a little bit, but it's gonna be the same general concepts. So for the A, we're gonna have these three chord positions. So we're only gonna be on the um, middle four strings, right? Fifth, fourth, third, and second string. So the first one is gonna be this A that I like playing. You could play it with all three fingers up here. Okay, what I like to do though, and I think it's easier for this exercise, it's a good thing to have in, in, in your skill in general, is do this barred A, where you're gonna bar the fourth, third, and second string. Very similar to what we were doing for the D. But we're gonna add in, we're gonna bar an extra string. Okay, so open, second, second, second. I have a whole video just on this topic. I'll put that in the description of this video uh, if you want to watch it. But then from here, what we're going to do is want to get used to doing this shape. Effectively, what this is, is this is the E-shaped bar chord. If you play it on the 5th, 6th, and 7th fret, that's an A major chord. All we're going to do, though, is take the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th string of that. And then add the open 5th string, which is an A, coincidentally. And that gives us basically an A major chord. You also could leave the thinnest string open if you want. Okay, I'm not gonna do that for this exercise to keep it simple, but that would be an A also. The thing you don't wanna do is you don't wanna play the low E string. So I'm sort of leaning my thumb just gently on it like that, right? So right now I'm muting the thickest string and the thinnest string with this finger, just sort of touching it right there. Check this out. So when I strum, I'm strumming all six strings, but the thickest and thinnest aren't making a noise because they're muted, okay? So this is the second shape. So you wanna get good at jumping between that first chord, the A, and then this chord, the A. <clears throat> Second fret, fifth, sixth, and seventh fret. Okay, now let's do this final hop. This is the trickiest one, but it's a really good one to learn because this is a universal chord shape you're gonna need. Up here, we're gonna basically um, be on the 9th, 10th, and 11th fret, okay? If you slide this same shape that you 
just played up to the 9th, 10th, 11th fret, and then you switch these two fingers. They're going to trade strings. This is also an A. Okay. Uh, if it helps, know that basically if you do the D chord, the triad shape, on 9, 10, 9, that is an A triad. Okay. And basically if you were to do, this is a hard one to do, but if you were, I can't even do it, but if you were basically to do that shape with the, um, so that shape A, that's basically what this is borrowing from. But again, I recommend starting with this one, move it up and then sort of just train your fingers to trade there. We're just playing the second, third and fourth string. Uh, that's what we're pushing down on when we're adding the open fifth string. Okay, so. And this is, this is, I'm still a little bit rusty on this one, to be honest. So that's, that's why I'm sort of having fun practicing this. But I've seen people play this shape in general. You want to have this shape under your belt if you can, okay? And here's a trick. When you're going between this one and this one, your ring finger is staying on that fourth string. That makes the transition easier in a way because it's like this finger is just sort of anchor. It doesn't need to do any switching. You switch frets, of course, but yeah. So those are the three A chords. Get used to those, okay? If you need to spend a day or two or three practicing these, this is a great little thing to practice and intersperse them with the Ds. And the great thing is that D and A are two major chords that are effectively in each other's key. Meaning, if you're in the key of D, a, it sounds good because it's your five chord. Okay? Likewise, if you're in the key of A, the D is your four chord. So they're going to sound good together. So that means you could sort of go between this D and this A. Or you can go between the D and this A. Or you could go between this D and this A. Okay, I'm being a little bit sloppy there, but it all sounds good. So that's the point is you can use these chord voicings in your general bag of tricks when you're just playing around. Now, let's get to sliding these A's. A little bit trickier. Again, this one, the key is get in that shape and then slide that shape up and have your end in mind. Do a short little slide. Oh, drop my pick. Right? And so one fret slide is a nice way to start. Let me grab another pick here. And now, going between this one. So I'm actually doing this finger switch right here, this little dance. I'm doing it on the fifth, sixth, and seventh fret. And I slide up then. So my general trick with sliding, or the advice I would have, is you want to um, use the shape that you're gonna arrive at, right? If you're gonna arrive in this shape, Start your slide with your hand in that shape. Get down here. So go from this shape and then switch and then strum and slide and then let it ring on your destination. So this final tab we have here, two strums of A, of the low A. Rest. Rest. One more time. So that's basically it. And again, as I said, you can sort of um, go between the A and the D. It's always going to sound good. You could go between this A and this D up here. You know what I mean? I have to look at it. This is, I'm not really used to this shape. Whoops, that's not really good. Um, so that's the A and the D, right? that 
fifth string ring, and I shouldn't really do that. Whoop. So this A and this D. Okay, so all, all kinds of fun you can have there. But again, you'll get this PDF. <clears throat> um, it'll teach you the shape for each of the chords, the D, the A, it'll show you the tabs at the bottom. Even if you don't wanna mess with sliding, this is a great way to just have fun um, learning different ways to play these chords up the neck of the guitar. And this is gonna be helpful because these general shapes are gonna be useful uh, when you play other chords as well. Um, the reason I picked D and A for this is because of the fourth string bass note and the fifth string bass note. It lets us do things with the open strings that you can't do in most other chords. So that's pretty much it. So, um, you know, I hope this is helpful for you guys. This is a fun one to work out. And um, that Tom Petty song, Girl on LSD, if you listen to it, I, I don't know the rhythm, but he's basically doing a slide from this D to that D. So I hope this is helpful for y'all. Thanks for watching. Get the PDF at my website, playsongnotes.com, lesson 366. Just punch that in the search bar. Thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. I appreciate it very, very much. And I'll talk to y'all in the next one. Take care and bye-bye.